Hey guys, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan, and we're looking at a Winnebago Rialta based off of the Volkswagen Eurovan platform. And so what this is, is the, I guess, biggest size Volkswagen camping car that you can get. The Rialta is a very cool vehicle with a very high-end image across the camping spectrum, I suppose. And these are one of my personal favorites in terms of camping cars. They're pretty big pretty wide and they're Volkswagen and I love Volkswagens and so this video is going to be a walk around the vehicle condition it was bought from auction in Japan and it's going to be exported to Canada under the 15 year rule it's a 1998 with just 60,000 original kilometers on it so to begin with we're going to check out the engine then we're going to go over the auction sheet and then exterior and then interior and so if you're looking for the interior have a look in the comment section usually somebody will post when in the video the interior comes in and special thanks to anyone who does that because you guys are the best okay to begin with it has a 2.5 liter gasoline engine in this one i've never seen a rialto with a diesel engine although they do make the eurovan in a diesel so you might be able to find one here in japan diesels are not that popular after about 98 or so because you can't register them in the tokyo yokohama kawasaki areas the engine itself seems to be good. It does have a lot of uh, fuel injector sound that you can hear. It also has an exhaust leak, and you'll be able to hear that uh, further on down there, but it sounds like there's one at the manifold as well. It has a Winnebago number there. Coolant looks good, oil looks good. Mechanically, the vehicle looks to be pretty good, and that should be without saying because it is only 60,000 original kilometers, and that amount is authentic. However, the vehicle has probably not driven very much in the last little while, so it's a good idea to get it fully serviced up when the vehicle lands in Canada. And I do wonder how many of these Rialtas made their way to Canada. They're fairly popular here in Japan, but not extremely so. Not extremely popular in Japan. Uh, mostly because of the large size. This would be considered a very big camper by Japanese standards. And it sure is hard to park. It takes up two spaces in our lot. It may even be bigger than uh, it looks on camera. I don't really know. Anyways, let's go over the auction sheet here. So I'll translate this for you. This is the in inspector's report, seller's points, and basic information about the car here. So it's a 96 Volkswagen Rialta camping car, 2.5 liter gasoline engine. Auction grade three, which is rather low. So make sure that you pay attention to the quality of this car. Interior grade is B, 60,607 kilometers. So relatively low mileage there. Um, even for a Japanese vehicle, for a camping car, sometimes people have higher mileage on them. Automatic transmission, it has AC, in fact it has two, two ACs and two heaters. And so there's the original AC and heater that comes from the engine, and then the roof has a, uh, a natural gas heater and a full electric AC system. And the vehicle has a generator as well, and an exterior plug-in so you can plug it into things. I'll go over that in more details when we go around the vehicle. Okay, so aftermarket Navi toll collection box, uh, reverse camera, a super old one with a CRT TV, it's kind of funny. Um, it has a gas range and a TV, it also has a fridge and it has a toilet, so lots of cool stuff in it. Here's the report of all the damage on it, it says seat and carpet dirty, animal hair inside the car, rear interior section has scratches and is dirty. The battery section has been modified, in fact it's been modified to have three times the amount of batteries, which is really weird but I guess somebody wanted to live off the grid for long amounts of time. <laughs> we don't need the engine running for the rest of this, so I'm gonna switch it off. That fan is uh, the electric fan, and I guess because of the uh, strain on the engine for how, uh, for towing such a large vehicle, the electric fan and the radiator may be upgraded and that's why the electric fan is so noisy, my gosh. Okay, exhaust leak, AC doesn't work, and in fact it's both ACs that don't work. The systems themselves work, but the AC gas seems to be depleted, and so those systems are going to have to be checked. Doesn't seem like a big problem to me. Okay, the back section has scratches, dents, and paint fade, as well as the tarp section has been taken off. So it usually has an awning up here and it's removed, and the brackets for putting it on are still in place, but the whole tarp has been removed. And, Sheetland Sheep Dog Ken Cherry's Blue Sophie. I have no idea. <laughs> it is kind of funny. And if you drive this around, people are going to be wondering what that, what that is. Or why did you put that on your van? Okay, underside has several areas of corrosion, and the roof has... Um, 
the roof has been painted and is uneven paint in various areas. So I'm gonna show you those two things. The underside, because the underside is so big, it makes it really dark under there and I can't find all of the corrosion. You can see a solar panel up there as well as the AC and that box in the back is a Coleman heater. There's also a Winnebago style antenna that you can stick up if you want. You can see that the roof has been painted by like this rock guard style paint. And so that's what they're referring to. Underside, it's hard for me to see. You can see some areas of corrosion, but because it's so dark underneath there, I can't get a good idea. And so this really needs to go on a lift and be inspected further by somebody else. Like when the vehicle lands, get it inspected. The Rialta is a platform that's always going to be valuable. And so no matter what it is, it's a good idea to get any sort of corrosion fixed because this can be on the road for a good long amount of time. Okay, various scratches and dents. And then if you look at the diagram here, we got some medium scratches here, a medium scratch there, some might mild. <laughs> I just tried to say mild and light at the same time. So some mild scratches on this side and uh, paint comes up. You saw the bubbles when I went up onto the top. It says that's in several places. Okay, so in general, I think the grade three is being a little bit tough on the car. Mind you, it does have paint fade, which you can see when I walk around, and it does have that corrosion on the underside, which is could be worse than we're capable of seeing. Because the vehicle is so big, it's hard to fit completely in one frame. So let me step back here. And the back is significantly wider than the front is. You can see that this section here, it flares out, but it continues to flare out more as you get to the back. And so you do have to be a little bit careful when you're parking, kind of like parking a dually truck. Okay. So you can see huge window in the back and this is where your dining table slash bed is. And you can get a good idea of exactly how wide that it is. It has brand new, not brand new, it has 2015 tires on it, which look like they don't have very much tra uh, very much wear on them at all. Usually I can get the whole thing in the frame here, but no such luck on this side. Sheepdog. Okay, so let's do that one more time and notice some things. So the front headlight here has water in it. Not really a big problem. That says that there's natural gas, i.e. Uh, be careful because like propane tank. Stickers on it have some peeling in various places. And then you can see there's, there's basically like one dent on the whole car here. And then that's it. That's the nice thing about campers is a lot of times they have these fiberglass boxes on them that don't tend to get damaged um, very easily. Like you can crack it, but it takes a lot to crack. Okay, so fuel in there. This one here is your water in. This is an exhaust. Little damage there. You can see this stripey look. That's from the Japanese black rain. The black rain in Japan. Okay, so inside here, I'm gonna open these for you to see. This is your generator. It says 100 volts, 30 amps, 3000 watts. So 3000 watts is actually a pretty decent amount of electricity. So that's very nice. Uh, inside here is um, your cable and the plug-in for plugging into the wall. It says here that you need 100 volt but you should be able to do 110 volt like they have in the US. We use all of our things, 100 volt and 110 volt um, interchangeably. Inside here is a spare tire, Got a small crack in the paint there. Sheepdog sticker, <laughs> huge rear wiper and Clarion camera. Okay. I don't know what this is for. Maybe for putting gas in or something. This one here is your gas tank for your natural gas. You do have to be careful that that gas tank is still usable. There's a label down there. Have a professional look at it because that can be dangerous. That's where the uh, tarp usually sticks onto. This one here is exhaust, same with this one. And then this is your exterior plugins so that you can plug in things on the outside of your vehicle if you want. Okay, most of the windows are in good shape. This one has some condensation between the two layers of glass that you can see there. There's a snubby, snubby thing there so that the door doesn't break your window. 
The windows um, on this side are both good. The windows on the other side have uh, some of the gasket coming off. Not coming off, just shrunk. You can see there and there. And same thing is going on over here. They should be able to get all of this dirty water, uh, dirty water marks off of the vehicle, but the vehicle should be still pretty faded, and so you may have to do some refinishing for that. I'm not too sure. You do have to be a little bit careful though, because with a body this big, you don't want to make any mistakes when you're doing any sort of refurbishment. This license plate has the Japanese illumination, which is pretty cool. It lights up the numbers on your license plate. You can buy a special license plate in Japan for that. Okay, so here is the interior, and I'm going to be a little bit slow for the interior because the inside of this is rather dark when it's parked in the shade, which it is right now. And so doing it slowly allows you to see things because it still will be rather dark in there. So this door here has a screen door that comes off. There's a little thing to pull here and see if I could do it with the one hand. There we go. And then you can close the screen door only. But <laughs> looks like it has a little hole there. Let's cover that. It's like uh, a little cash hole. So screen door and full-size door if you want to leave that open. All of the windows have screens on them and are openable as well. Except for the rear one. And the rear one is an emergency exit. It actually has instructions that says push the window at the corner and you should be able to pop it out. And it's huge. Okay, so heading in, open the door, and lock it into place here. Okay, so stepping in, we have a nice large opening area here, easy for two people to get in and out and pass each other in the door, which is pretty special for a camping vehicle to have a door as big as this one, and so that's really good. Come in here, ouch, watch your head, <laughs> apparently. Uh, this is the toilet. It's very cool because it has a slide out design, which I'll show you in just a second. But first off, let's go this way. And I'm 5'10 and my head just barely touches the ceiling in this vehicle. So first off, the driving seat area. And there's a full walk through to get into there. And so very easy to go from the front into the back. I don't think that these seats swivel, but they might. I did not check that. A lot of times the camping seats at the front do swivel. Okay, so going forward here, you got a nice big steering wheel. Seats are in good condition, and they're um, very cushy and soft, and they sink down a lot, and so comfortable for your long road trips. Standard Volkswagen-y stuff in here. Here you have controls for the rear heater and the rear AC. There's your reverse monitor and the shifter there. And the shifter's cracked, you can see on the top there. Other than that, I don't remember there being any damage in the front section here. Power windows work, shifting works, which is important because I hear that the transmissions on these can be a little bit weak. Seat has a little bit of wrinkling here on the side, but this, the leather is very soft and you can feel it's a, uh, a very nice feeling uh, leather. Okay, so stepping back, there's a power inverter up to 2000 watts. And so I believe that this system is used to have the vehicle's alternator charge these batteries. And so here's the battery modification. See these two boxes? Neither of these are supposed to be here. They're both external batteries and they're both really big. And so I believe that these batteries are supposed to go underneath these seats. And these cases are part of the set that you can get for extra batteries, but they're not actually wired in there properly. You can see the wires there that go into the inverter, and then the standard battery for the vehicle goes underneath this, and you can see it's in there. And that battery is not used to start the engine. It's a different battery. Okay, so these seats, these are your standard seats for sitting and driving. And so you get a four-seater with seat belts. I think four is all the seat belts that you get. And by the looks of the complexity of these, if you look down here, it looks like these might somehow turn into one bed. But I, could, I couldn't figure it out and I didn't have very much time. There is storage underneath that one and storage underneath this one. And I do believe that those would 
like uh, this part here goes forward, this part here goes back, and then those two cushions are used to go there and there in order to make a uh, kind of full-size bed. This would be a reasonable size. You also have cabinet up there, and cabinet up there, and then vent there. Your AC is at the top up there, and it looks like this is an intake, and these are for pushing the air into the back. So you can control these so that you can have air on your face and then air for the back. Okay, let's turn around here. So this island section here is kind of nice. It goes down there. You step down into it. And so you can stand at the kitchen area here. Even taller people than me. I think you get about 180 centimeters when you're standing here. It's still wrapped in plastic. That's kind of cool. And here you get your fridge. And inside of the fridge has some moldiness. It's weird. Usually camping cars that we get don't have moldiness in them, but this one does. Size of the fridge is pretty good though, as far as camping cars go. Some sort of stuff here that I don't understand. Colder, uh, that's the fridge controls. And then a little cabinet there as well, and a drawer here. Uh, 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 uh. Well, kind of a drawer. It hasn't been open in a long time, it's stuck shut. So sink here, that's reasonable. Microwave here. That's reasonable. This one, I wonder what this is for. And then this one's your burners. So dual burners. There's a guy outside. What is he doing? Look at that guy. What are you doing out there? Okay, so here's the dining area. Got a fold away table, a lamp, and this one here is a standard lamp mount. And so you can mount your own lamp up here, whichever one that you want. And then this one here would have to be up more. It kind of swings in the rear view mirror as you're driving it. Kind of weird. But a nice large table there. And like the front seats, very soft, much softer than your regular camper seats. Plugins over there, cable box, and you could fit four people very easily at this table if you needed to. You could fit six. Got a TV on the side there. Looks like you can swivel it a bit. Okay, and then this becomes your bed. Fold away the table, take the two back pieces, and then put them in the center. I believe that's how you would do it. And it becomes your bed in the back. And that is going to be a super soft bed. Okay, also cabinets up there. I guess that guy wants to drop off a car or something. Okay, so bathroom. It looks like too small of a bathroom to use, but it is really cool because if you pull this and pull this, the whole thing comes out. Have a look. And then you have a bathroom. Very cool. Gomenasai mo chotto mo nipun grai. Semimasen. And double hand it. Now you don't want to close it when someone's in there. That would be funny and scary. Uh, probably scary for the person inside and funny, or maybe not funny for the person outside. Nice big place for your coats. Place for your, for your shoes. Uh, and some other stuff that doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so once more, there's the front, two seats that turn into a bed, bathroom, kitchen, and table section. Okay, and that's basically it for this one. I'm going to let this poor man drop off his AMG that he brought. That's nice of him. Everyone should deliver you an AMG. Okay, and that will be the end of the video. So hope you enjoyed it. This one's 20 minutes long. The camping ones are usually a little bit longer uh, than the uh, regular cars, but they have more to show off. 
So hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.